In the last video, we covered making lines and covering the relationships between them, whether we add those automatically or manually. In this video, let's add some new things into the mix, namely arcs, circles, and the relationships those can have. Let's get into it. In this view, I would like to make a triangular, and I'll start by sketching on this plane. So we'll hit the sketch button. And now that we're in the sketching environment, I can use the circle tool. And for circles, I simply click where I want the center of the circle to be. In this case, I want it to be on the origin. And then I click somewhere for the edge of the circle to be. And I'll do the same thing, just like that. Now that I've drawn these four circles, I can work on making, say, an arc. And arcs are pretty simple as well. I can click on the arc tool over here. And when I go to place an arc, I place the center point of the arc the start point, and then the end point. So I simply draw an arc by clicking three unique points. So in this case, I know that I want my arcs to share the same center as these circles. So I can click on the center of a circle, and I can make my arcs. Excellent. Next, I can take this line and connect it to the two ends of an arc. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the curvature of this arc ended right on the slant of this line? In other words, if they were tangent? Well, fortunately, we have a tangent relation. If we go up here, we can find the tangent relation right there. So I'll click on the tangent relation, I'll click my arc and my line, and now they have the tangent relation showed up. It's where the sketch will do everything to keep the, the arc and the line tangent. Let's apply that over here as well. And I can draw another line from here to here and from here to here. And I can use my tangency relation to make sure that my arcs and my lines are all tangent with each other. With that being done, I can add a few other things. I know that I would like my arcs to have the same radius. And so I'll use the equal relation to make sure that all of my arcs have the same radius. I can also click on each line to make sure that all the lines are equal length. As you can tell, this triangle will freely move around irrespective of the circle. And perhaps I would like the triangle to be centered on the circle. One way to do that is to use a bolt circle. If I wish to have some imaginary references in my sketch that don't actually drive anything except for tell the geometry where it should be, I can use construction geometry or reference geometry as it's sometimes called, like this circle. I can lay a reference circle down right on the origin on this circle, and you'll notice that this circle is uh, dotted. It's a dotted line, and that means that this is not determining the shape or feature of anything that we're sketching, but the dotted line is simply there to help position the things that we are sketching. I will grab the coincident constraint and make sure that this circle is coincident to our circle, here, here, and finally here. So now these circles will always stay connected to my reference circle. I can also say that I would like to have a horizontal constraint on this line, and that will just keep the flange from rotating around its center. Finally, I'd like to throw one other concept into this video, and that is I can continually adjust the size of this, but what if I want my sketch to have a particular given size? Well, for that, we have the dimension tool over here. If I click on the dimension tool and I click on my circle, I can specify what diameter I would like my circle to be. Let's say I'd like it to be 4 inches. Well now, if I try to change the size of the circle, I can't because a Libre will always keep the circle at a diameter of 4 inches. Likewise, I can add a radius onto this. Perhaps I'd like this to be a half inch radius. And I can add a diameter onto this hole. Maybe I'll give that a half inch diameter. I can use the equal relation, and I'll make sure that here, here, and here are all the same size. 
And then the very last thing is this circle. I like to give that a diameter of two. And there we have a sketch of a three hole flange. And we'll notice that this sketch is all black. So in Alibre, that's how we deal with arcs, circles, the relationships between them, and even adding dimensions. But what does it mean when a sketch turns black? Let's cover that in the next video.